Welcome, everyone. We are happy you are worshiping with us today, wherever and whenever you are worshiping. Please feel free to leave us a message or leave a comment in the video and let us know how we can best connect with you, pray for you, and where you are joining us from, whether it's Quincy or the rest of the world. We are a church where all are welcome. Please participate as fully as you wish, or simply watch and take it all in. Let us uh, pray. Let us pray. Let us pray that we, that we may respond to God's trust in us. God, our kind and loving Father, you no longer call us servants, but friends. There is so much you have entrusted to us, even the future of your kingdom of justice and love. Give us the grace to work out with you the growth of mercy and goodness in this world, to be united with all Christians and with all who seek you with a sincere heart in bringing reconciliation and joy to everyone. Let us go together the way to you, our living and loving God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us now sing together hymn number 715 in the United Methodist Hymnal, Rejoice, the Lord is our King. The words are also in your online order of worship. <laughs>
For it is as if a man, going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received five talents went off at once and traded with them, and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of these slaves came and settled accounts with them. The, then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing with him five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things to enter into the joy of your master. And the one with two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him, and give it to the one with ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Erica. Let us be in prayer. Loving and holy God, may you work through me as we hear this message, and may the words of my mouth and the meditations and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our strength, our rock and redeemer, and may your Holy Spirit be with all of those who hear and receive this message today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, it is certainly good to be back after a week of relaxation, rest, and renewal along the coast. Now, as much as I love living in the mountains, there's something super spiritual about being by the ocean and the redwoods. Especially when you're sitting by the ocean, feeling a salty spray hit your face. When you see that white foam along the sand. And then watching the waves, which were really high last week with the storm. Likewise, it was nice seeing some rain and feeling the cooler air, smelling the earthy fragrance around us. As summer seemed to go right into winter overnight last Thursday. Of course, the presidential election has also been on our minds, and as I, I was intending to disconnect last week, didn't do exactly the best job of doing that as I could. There was just too much suspense. Well, I know with political tensions being at an all-time high right now, I'm not going to dwell too much on the election on this, although we, I will reiterate that now is the time for healing as a nation. Now is the time for healing as a society and community. And it's time to find ways that we can still acknowledge our differences, but still have a relationship with each other, whether we agree or disagree. Although I am going to admit, too, that I do draw some lines when it comes to any blatant toxicity, racism, sexism, homophobia, transphobia, ableism, and the like, or xenophobia. Is that somewhere where I have a hard time agreeing to disagree? Yet as followers of Christ, it's our task to try and put more love into the world, which is a big part of our gospel lesson today as we consider our talents and entering into the joy of our master. As we approach Jesus' parable of the talents, we find ourselves in the middle of three parables situated in Matthew 25. 
three days before, well, several days before Jesus is to be crucified. Last week, Pastor Ray talked about the parable of the ten bridesmaids. As Jesus is using a lot of language here about his second coming, about being prepared, watching, and staying awake, even though we are still in the now, but not yet. Today's parable talks about expanding our talents. As Jesus tells us of a master who gives each of his workers various talents, which in first century Palestine were 15 years worth of wages for a day laborer. That's a lot of money. But it was a lot of money that each of the workers were given to steward or to take care of. Similar to the ways that we are called to stewardship here in the church. Or if we're renting a place, how we steward the property owner's property or take care of it. Well, here in the church, we're called to use our gifts, to share our gifts. And like the first two workers, you know, we're called to multiply those gifts. Well, now, while the first two workers in the parable double the master's talents are, and are invited to enter into the joy of the master, the last worker's action of Burying the one talent is an act of fear, an act of distrust, of scarcity, and things don't exactly end too well for them. While this parable sometimes gets misconstrued for prosperity gospel, which is that belief that the more faith you have, the more blessings or the more material goods you can acquire on earth, there's a lot more to it because the parable of the talents in recent time has been interpreted in how we use our gifts and the talents that we have, such as teaching, singing, crafting, etc. Now, although talents have changed from the monetary unit to using the gifts that we have today, we tend to look at oftentimes what we have, and too often we feel like we don't have enough. Too often we tend to operate under scarcity, not abundance. Well, one of the things that I find challenge find in this reading is that what if we looked at talents as not something with a price tag attached? What if we look at these talents as something beyond money or material goods? What instead if we looked at talents as something like love, grace, and understanding? Stuff that doesn't have a price tag attached. What if we could multiply that love, grace, and understanding in our world instead of hatred and division. As Derek Weber explains, the one way to see it is that there is no entry fee into the kingdom of God. Your net worth has nothing to do with your eternal value. This is our proclamation for today. This is our invitation to the people of God. You were chosen not for your ability to learn, but because you are loved. And because you are loved, you have an ever-increasing capacity to love and return. That's what expands, that's what multiplies as we continue our journey to become disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And when we find ourselves making disciples, even as we are being made disciples. This is a vital message today in an era of division and hatred based on these external factors and human constructs. The proclamation that every single person has an inherent worth is radical and life-changing and world-changing. So how might you celebrate this inherent worth? Well, it's clear that love, grace, and understanding are all priceless, and they can be contagious. And that's why it's important that we got to try to share it, even when people might not be willing to be very receptive to it, may even reject it. Nevertheless, all people are of sacred and inherent worth because God's love is infinite. And we have the capacity to share that same love of God with everyone through our actions and through our words. Perhaps we can see our love, grace, and understanding like the talents, where we can multiply each instead of burying them or hiding them, but instead share them freely without fear or distrust. It reminds me of a song I used to sing in Sunday school that I'll sing for the young people's lesson, The Magic Penny, as it goes, Love is something if you give it away, you end up having more. It's just like a magic penny, hold it tight and you won't have any. Like the magic penny, our gifts and talents are meant to be shared, multiplied, 
and not buried or not held tight. See, our grace, love, and understanding for each other and ourselves is one of the many ways that we can enter into the joy of the Master, of the kingdom of God, and that we are called to help others and to bring that kingdom to the here and now and helping others and entering into the joy of the Master. Well, this parable is an example of both positive and negative ways of living as we actively work toward bringing the kingdom of God to earth in the here and now and while we wait for the return of Jesus or await returning to Jesus when our time on earth is over. Now, all of us have something to offer, whether it's a kind word to somebody that we don't know, whether it's sharing a meal, although in light of COVID, more like maybe making a meal for somebody and dropping it at their doorstep or going shopping for somebody that might be homebound, picking up the phone and checking in with each other, or anything in which you can share something or offer something that doesn't necessarily have a price tag to it. Whatever we offer doesn't have to be much, as it's a way of sharing our love, our grace, and our understanding with those around us, especially in light of the election and the healing, and healing the divisions that we face. I've observed some conversations on my personal Facebook page from some friends I've known a while who do not vote the same, and I have seen some conversations in which each other's trying to help understand how others see the world differently from each other. And I appreciate this because those of this group of friends that I haven't had any broken relationships with, you know, we all respect each other's lived experience. Although, unfortunately, there have been some that haven't wanted to hear another side. And there have been some that just completely shut off conversation. And yet, I still pray for them, and I still hope to heal those divisions someday. Even in our own church, we don't see eye to eye on everything. And so beginning in January, I'm inviting us into some courageous conversations. It's conversations around race, immigration, sexuality, gender, to name a few. Maybe even science. Conversations that are uncomfortable, but necessary. And that's why they're called courageous. Except it's in order to better understand. It's not about making a political statement. It's not about you know, trying to bring politics into the church. But it's about helping each other as people understand. It's about sharing our love, grace, and understanding with each other. Just like we share the workers share the talents with each other. You know, such conversations are a part, small part of how we should strive to live in the here and the now. And especially in the not yet as we wait to see what God has yet to do, while still seeing what God is doing today. And see, even Jesus' message, which turned the king, kingdom and the empire and the powers and systems and principalities in his time upside down, was not always well received. Which, as I said, this is happening just a few days before he's to be crucified. But he encourages his followers to multiply their grace and their talents, to show grace, love, and understanding to those around them, even though he knew he wasn't going to be around to see it come to fruition. Well, all of this is how we enter into the joy of the Master, how we multiply our talents by sharing our gifts of love, grace, and understanding, not necessarily having faith in order to see what we can get out of it or obtain things that may only satisfy us for a short time, because really, the adventure, of, the, the adventure of faith is not necessarily going to be neat and tidy. And it's going to be an adventure. Well, see, as we look at this parable, too, Jesus is using these exaggerated statements or hyperbole to show us how we can multiply these talents, how to live as better people, which is what faith is intended for, and how we can bring God's kingdom here to earth today. Not just wait for it to happen, but work together to bring it today. See, God wants us to live abundantly. And this parable is an act of invitation into a life of faith, in which there's no clear instructions, just as the Master didn't give his workers 
clear instructions on what to do with the talents. Well, even as we await when we can safely relaunch our in-person worship, which has taken another setback, and as we await Jesus' return, I want you to reflect this week about how are we living in the here and now? How are we actively working towards bringing God's kingdom to earth in the here and now? And how will you multiply your love, your grace, and your understanding to others around you, especially in the days to come? We'll be considering this a lot as a new year in the Christian calendar begins. As we start talking about waiting, watching, preparing our hearts for the birth of Jesus as, a, as the season of Advent begins two weeks from today. And once again, we prepare our hearts to make room. So in the meantime, let us fully live in to our faith. Let us multiply our love, our grace, and our understanding as we enter into the joy of the Master. Offered to you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, let the church say, Amen. And so as we prepare to go into this time of prayer and lifting up our prayers, I invite you to turn to page 2176 in the Black Hymnal, The Faith We Sing. As we sing together, make me a servant, and we will sing this twice. The words are also printed in your online bulletin. Friends to COVID-19, 
Those who have lost friends and loved ones to tragedy, tragedy to accidents, to cancer, or to any heart, heart disease or any other ailment. We pray, Lord, for your comforting spirit to be with them. We pray, Lord, for your comforting spirit to be with those who struggle right now, those who feel hopeless, those who feel despair and anxious, that we can, that your spirit can help them see hope beyond the despair. We pray, Lord, for our nation, our world, our county, our state, our community. We pray for the leaders of each. We pray, Lord, especially in light of this election, that we can have courageous conversations and that we can work toward healing as a nation, as we are a nation divided right now. We pray, Lord, for open ears, open minds, open hearts. Pray, Lord, that we can talk together without name-calling or cutting each other down. We pray, Lord, for wisdom and guidance for our leaders, especially in this time of transition. And we pray, Lord, for grace. And we pray, Lord, for hope. Lord, we pray for our church. We pray for our bishop, our superintendent, our circuit colleagues, our co churches around our conference, our churches here in Quincy, and the church universe. We ask that your Holy Spirit be with them all. Revive us to be the hands and feet of Jesus in everything that we do, and how we relate to people, and how we can show grace, love, and understanding, just like, and multiply it, just like the talents. We pray, Lord, for all of the unspoken requests, as you know what is on their hearts. We pray for those who are traveling. We pray for, again, for all of our essential workers, that you may protect them and keep them safe. And so, Lord, let us now lift up prayers that are on our hearts as we spend some time in stillness. Lord, accept these prayers that we give to you as we leave them at, the, at your throne of grace and leave them in your hands. And so with disciples from generation to generation and with the confidence of children of God, let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us as we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And so as we go forth with the rest of our day, let us join together in the hymn, Take My Life and Let It Be. The words are in your online bulletin, or in your order of worship, as these are a different tune than what's in the United Methodist hymnal. This is the Presbyterian version, so for any of you Presbyterians out there, this is for you. So let us sing together, Take My Life and Let It Be.
multiply our love. Let us put more love into this world. You know, our world really needs more love right now, especially in light of divisions, tensions. And so let us go forth to be healers. Let us go forth to be peacemakers. Let us go forth with the love of God. And so like those workers and the talents, let us take our love, grace, and understanding and multiply it. Let us double it, maybe even triple it. So as you go forth and do that, may God be with you each step of the way. May God guide your steps. May God guide your feet. May God hold your hand and stand with you as we go forth from this place and as we go into this new week. So may God bless you. May God keep you. May God make God's face shine upon you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, let the church say, Amen. And as always, remember to wear your mask, practice social distancing, and wash your hands as they are a means of grace and doing no harm. God bless.